Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Have you ever wondered if spark plugs can make more power than not? Now I know it's not, well, not what you're exactly what you're thinking. You're, you're thinking, wait a minute, is this that split fire, the dual post spark plugs, one making more power than the other? No, 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 that's not what I mean at all. Have you ever thought about whether a non-projected spark plug like so would make less power or more power than a projected tip spark plug? So, in case you're wondering what I mean by this, typically on any boosted stuff we use a non-projected tip spark plug. But, the projected tip, and as you can tell it's sticking out further, it's got a longer electrode, seems like it would be the better choice. You might say, how do you get that idea? Well, if you put it in the chamber with the projected tip spark plug, typically it would move the spark closer to the center and would have a better flame travel maybe, um, and this should make more power, in theory maybe. On the flow bench, so I've got two, every time I flow ahead, nine, I'd say 90% of the time, the non-projected tip, this one, flows more air. And the reason why is because that projected tip does block the airflow, and we're not talking like a lot, but about 3 CFM, which I guess it kind of adds up, but one of the tests I have never done until yesterday was finding out which actually makes more power, the projected tip, sorry, the projected tip or the non-projected tip. So here's the engine. You might remember this engine. This is the small block Ford. It's 427 cubic inches. This is the one that was used in the cam challenge. So I put a different camshaft in it, but still one of the competitors camshafts into it and didn't change anything else, repaired the shaft that was broken and new intake gaskets and ran it. And we tested a bunch of different stuff, different carburetor sizes, different uh, carburetor spacers and all that, but also an air cleaner. We did that one as well, but I got to finally test this idea. So there you go. And again, just so you have a better understanding, the reason why we typically use a non-projected tip in a um, boosted application is because when you got a projected tip, all that metal that's hanging out there, it will gather more heat and it acts like a glow plug, which is horrible for um, a boosted application or a nitrous application because you don't want pre-ignition happening. It damages stuff. So 99% of the times I use a non-projective tip spark plug. But since this engine's run NA and it's got a set of my trip flow heads, these are actually just like it almost. The only difference in this head that's here, this is the, one of the models that was used from the one that was used in the dyno test, is that this one has a different intake port. The chambers are exactly the same. So the chamber that you see here is the chamber that was used for this dyno test. And again, flowing on the flow bench with the non-projected spark plug, it's 3 CFM better than the projected tip. But that's just flow bench. I gotta test it, I gotta know how much it's gonna make. Here's the bad part. If you're thinking this is gonna gain like 20 horsepower or show that, it didn't. So here are the numbers. I'm not gonna give you a whole lot of suspense, save you some time. So, and again, this is a pump gas engine. So this is, we're running on the 91. We mix with like, it's a 15 gallon drum and there's like five gallons of 110, the rest is 91. So it probably comes up to like 93 or something that you could find in other areas besides Oklahoma. Um, it's got, I said, my heads on it that are ported. They're my CNC ported um, trick flow high ports, uh, ported BMP intake and a dominator carburetor up top. So it's a healthy engine. With the non-projected tip, so like this, it made 715 horsepower, which is pretty good. I mean, that's, that's making some steam. Switch to the projected tips, 711 horsepower. So it actually lost peaks for horsepower, but that doesn't really help you guys a whole lot. What you really want to see are the actual overlays, which is this. If you were happen to be a channel member, that means you paid. There'll be a link in the description for this video if you want to become a channel member. I'm going to put all the testing that I did yesterday. Um, we'll drop into your link so you get the chance to see that. Um, we did not get a chance to test the big block four. That will happen later. Some things came up, but we're going to get that tested. So everything that you see here will be in that link. For those that aren't, you can just pause the video. Here's the overlay. And as you can tell, there's not a whole lot of difference. Um, if you look through the entire curve, the non-projected tip is better, uh, especially at the top. So maybe that's its three CFM gain, that's its four horsepower. But for the most part, they're tracking pretty close. The point I'm trying to make to this is it didn't really make that much of a difference. As a matter of fact, 
it's probably within the margin of error. But we did repeat the test to see if it would repeat the same number, and it kept making 711 horsepower. So it didn't, it didn't do anything for that. An odd coincidence, though, this did happen, and I'm just thinking about it now as I'm sharing with you. So we did this test, and this is same timing, didn't change timing at all, same setup, just spark plugs, and you get this result. However, later on, after we're doing this, one of the things I did do is I took out, we, well, I shouldn't say that. First, we added timing, lost horsepower. Took away timing from what it had and gained horsepower. Now, here's what I mean. And all the cam challenge when it was done with the non-projected tip was 35 degrees. And we were doing preliminary testing. We had tested at 34 and 35 actually made just a little bit more. So we kind of left it there. We figured it was at its best it was going to get. But definitely at 34, it was making less than at 35. When I switched to the projected tip, we left it at 35 degrees. The timing never changed. But went back and did some more adjusting with this. And this is the interesting part because I know some of you probably already commented this. By chance, we tried some timing with it. So first off, I added a degree. So it went to 36 degrees. Really did not like that. It went down to 708, so it was a loss. So then I like, well, let's go the other way. Went to 33 degrees, and then it made 715, tying what the non-projected tip spark plug is. So here's where the catch is. If you leave timing exactly the same, the projected tip's losing. If you had the projected tips, at least in this case, taking out a couple degrees of timing makes the same power as the non-projected tip. So it's a little bit of a weird thing that just happened there, but I thought I'd share that with you. So in the end, it's a wash. I really do wish something so easy to change as a spark plug would just gain a magical amount of number of power, but it just doesn't. Matter of fact, if I'm being honest, uh, we spent probably about six hours on the dyno yesterday. As far as testing goes, we might as well have been testing for NHRA Pro Stock because all we're finding are twos and threes. Uh, very frustrating day in that account. So spacers, two or three, carburetors, two or three, timing, two or three. So nothing that even swung 10 horsepower. But I thought I'd share that with you because one of the things, like I said, I always wanted to test was the difference between projected tips and non-projected tips. So oddly enough, my S10 that I'm looking at, it's behind the camera there. It runs a projected tip and I've got the Torque Storm Supercharger. I've never had an issue, but I may actually switch it to the non-projected tip now just to try it because even though that one is boosted. Anyway, thanks for watching. Sorry it took a while for video, just trying to get stuff done. But if you want to know anything more of the details, ask them in the questions. As a matter of fact, if there's something you want to know, ask it in the comments right here. So just comment here, whatever question you want. And I think what I'll do is in the next videos or so, I'll answer those questions. I know Steve Morris does that, but I read the comments, but I don't have time to answer them. And it's not because I'm trying to be mean. What happens is I'll click on the comments. I'll go to write something back. Someone will call or someone will interrupt me with an email or something else will come through. Something interrupts me and I forget that I didn't comment back all the way. I didn't get a chance to finish it and it never gets done. So it's not me trying to be necessarily mean to you guys. It's just time sucks. So ask in your comments a question. You can ask anything about the engine at all. Uh, you can ask anything about, even if it's not related to the engine, and I'll do my best to answer. And I'll probably do it in another video um, just so you guys get a better chance. Anyway, um, still we'll do an update video tomorrow because I want to show you a couple of things. But anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of that. Uh, remember, I don't port cast iron heads. I am no Superman for sure. I did race Superboy. You guys take care.